and um, we'll go ahead and get started. The others will be here shortly. So um, today we're going to continue on from our discussion last week on uh, early childhood program models. And I'm sure this week you had a good time reading the chapter. It's full of good knowledge. And we're going to um, go ahead and talk about high school Reggie Malia and the project approach today. So I have some activities planned. And the first one um, is high school. And I wanted to refer you to Blackboard for just a minute as we get started, because I have a chart that I placed in here this morning. You may recognize the chart from the textbook. I put it in table format. It was bulleted in the textbook. <clears throat> we talked about Montessori last week, and today we're going to talk about high scope. So before I go flashing down on high scope too much, I want you to think about your reading and think of think about you read why you read about high scope last week. See if there's anything that you remember that was important that you wanted to share with anyone. not, that's okay. We'll go ahead and look at the, the chart. Okay, I have this ready for you. Okay. We've already talked about Montessori, so we're going to skip that for now. scope model components on the early childhood program model chart. Okay. Reflect on your beliefs about learning, teaching, and share your ideas. So I left in the um, right side column a space for you to talk, think about your beliefs and just write, jot down a couple notes about those. Okay. And something that this can help you with <clears throat> is your philosophy statement. You've been working on that I graded your rough drafts last week. You guys did a great job. Great first rough draft. <clears throat> so you'll keep reflecting on that through the semester. At the end of the semester, we'll write your final drafts. I thought as we're doing these activities today, you can kind of have double purpose. Learning more about the uh, models and also reflecting about your beliefs and how they apply in your philosophy. So after we finish with the um, looking at the chart, then we will go ahead and um, share it. But the key, and what I want you to do overall is to think about the three key components of the model you would incorporate into your classroom, okay? So look at each component, each criteria of the high scope, and they're listed. Let's see, beginning with the main features of theory is based on Piaget, constructivism, Dewey and Vygotsky and on down the line, all the way to key experiences guide the curriculum and promoting children's active learning. Also, you can look at the teaching roles because the teacher, um, what the teacher does is important as well in the model. So think how those are important compared to your beliefs and what sticks out to you. So basically, we'll be sharing three, your top three um, tenets about this um, model. So take a couple minutes and um, work on that and then we'll share. We're ready, I think. Okay, so um, we'll come back together. Does everybody have some thoughts written down? Okay, great. So, Alyssa, would you mind sharing your key components? Top three, that's fine. Um, the first one was the theory is based on PJ constructivism, Dewey, and Bugatti, kind of like the plans based on the child's interest. 
I thought it was a good idea because if you incorporate like some of their ideas in with it, then maybe they want to do it more because mm -hmm. it's more um, entertaining to them and also they want to learn about the ladies and stuff. Like that. Okay. Okay. And did anybody else have do this same yeah. feature down? Oh yeah. yeah. We'll kind of go back and forth. I put the like the exact same thing about them wanting to do it. Like if they're interested in it, then they want to do it. But if they don't, then I mean, they might still want to do it, but not as much, or they might not want to be as much, or be interested as much. Okay. Scarlett, did you say that? Um, yeah, I did. I think it's important that um, we, when we figure out like what, how they learn best, I think it's good to go on that, because I know for me it was hard, like, looking, and so whenever I found a way that was helpful for me to learn more, it was easier and more fun for me. Amanda, you want to share your top one here since we're <coughs> kind of like right um, on I chose that children educate themselves self self directed learning. Is that the one you did? It's a, yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit different, and that's okay. Just your top one is fine. We're gonna go on with the flow. Um, I chose it because I believe that it teaches kids respect for themselves, and respect for others. Okay. Those are all very important. I I chose um, the, the uh, models or the theories as well, the Piaget constructivism, Dewey and Vygotsky, because just having that basic knowledge is important. And those are some of my top people when I am working in the classroom. So, um, anybody else want to lead off with another idea that was important to them? Their second thought maybe that was a key component? Lindsay, what do you think? I'll just go down the line. Uh, I think the, uh, like how facilities learn through encouragement. I don't know, I feel like that's a really good way to learn it. That was like, I encourage you to uh, it's actually like, because they want to and stuff. Okay, and any thoughts? If I want to piggyback onto the Thoughts I actually wrote that one down too. Okay. Um, I think it's important to encourage your students because if you don't encourage them, then they won't want to learn. And, you know, so I just feel like encouragement is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did the plan B review kind of just on the same lines that the main teacher. Because if you like use it and if they think it's good and they actually enjoy doing it, then you could possibly go back and incorporate some of the stuff in that into another new plan. Mm -hmm. and then from was prepared environment supports and invites and enables learning and I think positive environments like or prepared environments create positive atmospheres for children. Great and my second feature here that I was looking at was the key experiences guiding the curriculum and active learning. I believe and I try to do this in class too and for us all learners really look best, I believe, when they're active, not just receiving information. So I really think that's important, and uh, I, I like that idea. So. Okay, how about a third feature or component? Need one more. Scarlett or Amanda, you want to lead us off? Um, I'll go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I chose children are grouped in multi-age environments and children should learn to work in groups like at an early age so that they can have good like social skills and stuff. So I thought that was important. Okay, and how about um, Scarlett? What's what's a key component I scope that you're looking at? Um, I wrote my third one is I wrote that to engage in positive adult child interaction training. How about um, Alyssa or, or uh, Lindsay? What do you think? I have the same as Scarlett. I like the how the adult child. I think they learn more that way too. Okay. And Alyssa? Um, I did the child focus on the curriculum. You can kind of of the first one and the first one and the second one. Okay. And my last one. Children are 
children have to determine curriculum as well. Yeah. I, I agree with working with students if they have a vested interest, then they are going to learn more, be uh, progressing you know, faster, and um, just the, the knowledge will be learned more deeply too. So, okay. So, the, this is, you know, these are the main components of high school. What we, in your reading, you were doing more with, you know, learning about high school. I wanted to go on and touch on Reggie Mania. We're kind of spending about 10 minutes on each um, model today. So, the Reggie Mania has a video clip. These. I'll go back to the activity. You can do these at home a little bit more if you want to, or you know, review anything. That's fine. They're in the Blackboard Session Seven folder. So, okay, the Reggie Mealy approach. One of the implications of the Reggie Mealy approach has for all early childhood professionals is to make all classrooms more aesthetically pleasing. Okay. What does that mean to be aesthetic? Might be able to use your context clues by reading on. If um, if you look into a classroom and you see a lot of you know tables all scrunched together and the children really close and things you know kind of um, on the wall too much going on, is that do you think that would be aesthetically pleasing? I'm leading you to the answer. No. So aesthetically pleasing would be looking nice, beautiful, functioning well, um, all of those run together in this area. Okay. So there is a uh, video from YouTube. I love YouTube. That we're going to watch a little bit. Let's see. Let's see if that starts it up. If it doesn't, plug it in. Basically, what does this make you think of and see how you could um, describe it, okay? And if you want to, yeah, it could be in the form of a feeling, you know, it could be what you see. It's kind of open there. You can put yourself in the perspective of the teacher or the perspective of the child, either way.
showed a lot of plants and stuff. Um, I thought it was all very modern looking. I mean, it was all like stuff you wouldn't see back in the day, I feel, but. Um, I put contemporary to go with that. I had like the garden, like how they had the tiles and stuff into it was rocks. I put it outside, not typical play area. So like whenever I first saw it, I was like, wait, this is kind of weird. But then like it was different from other play areas, which I think is pretty cool. Okay. Um, let's see. I put um, something a little bit different was clean. because one part of the show with the lights, they were like little bright and stuff, and other kind of kids were like that as well. Okay. Um, I don't know if someone already said this, but I put down art because there was oh. a lot of rooms where it was just dedicated to art and arts and crafts. Okay. Oh, this is actually the last one. It has a, I don't even know if it's been said, but I, the furniture was just super cool. Like, mm -hmm. there was just a different different shapes of oh, and colors and just this goes with my theme this right a little bit healthy just reminded me of health you know good health when so, the fruit popped up yeah when the fruit <laughs> yes that's what it was <laughs> you read my mind um, mine kind of goes along with two of the other things of like the nature whatever it's like I always feel like they're nice they have like a little walkway through the trees and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then like the art room, how they have so many crafts and like a lot of ways to organize it. looking at it, I was thinking if I was a child in that classroom, I would just be happy. Yeah, the, you know, the way that is just so nice and organized and clean, um, the learning, you know, that would go on there would be really phenomenal. But um, you, know, you can see that each model has some pretty unique um, aspects that you can um, pick out. And, you know, you can teach Montessori and do some really with um, the multi-age and the natural items and the same thing so we have the budget area. So they have, there are similarities that run through all the models. So, and, and how you apply them in your own classroom and it will be up to you and the people you work with. So, um, now there is another part to this, okay? Um, I would like for you to review the NEA.org website article, it's just brief, a few paragraphs. I'm, I'm going to send you to the computers for that. And then there are little web links for different people. And I'd like for you to get some ideas, a list five ideas from the article, or not from the article, but from the links. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. It's easier to see it.
our teacher, um, we would most likely be a part of this. And then there are teachers down here that um, we can look at for a K through. Um, so I'm going to list off the names. Abby Jacobs is one. You can see that she's a kindergarten teacher, so just take a look at her slideshow, OK? Um, it might be good to, for the time, sake of time that we do, <clears throat> divide them up and just do the primary teachers like one at a time. We could call off and say, I'll do this one, I'll do this one. So we'll take a look at them when you get to the computer, okay? And then um, list five ideas in the wiki. Okay, so the bridging me up way to approach wiki is right here. And just list your name at the top, okay? So I'll put my name. And then list your ideas okay, of in the class blog. Now it's actually a wiki um, that you would like to implement to make your classroom effective. And we get those ideas by clicking with those people in the yeah. Yeah. So you can also use ideas from the video that we saw. It could be a combination. Mm -hmm. So if you have your laptop here, you can use that. And if you don't, why don't you just use one of the computers toward the front room so we can 